I am here with video number three over section 3.3 lipids from chapter three, organic molecules for AP biology. When we talk about lipids, a lot of times we often use the, the term fats or oils. Uh, you'll see though it includes more categories than that. Uh, they have, they're very um, different in structures depending on which lipid you're talking about. Uh, we'll take a look at kind of four main classes of them here, um, but it, just know that this is a pretty broad category of biomolecule. Uh, they tend to be fairly large as when we talk about molecular size, and they tend to be nonpolar. In other words, they do not mix with water. Uh, functions can serve as long-term energy storage. Again, these are some of the fats and oils up here. Uh, structural components, heat retention, you know, that layer of blubber that keeps you warm, uh, cell communication regulation, uh, that would be some of the hormones would fall into this category, uh, protection, uh, again, fats, oils, phospholipids, steroids, waxes, uh, the waxes a lot of times would go under this protection category for some fruits and plants. Okay, here you see some of the five uh, basic ones we want to look at here in this video. Uh, number one are fats, uh, which are long-term energy storage, uh, mostly in animals, uh, tend to be solid at room temperature. Uh, oils, which are energy storage in plants and some of their seeds, uh, they tend to be liquid at room temperature. So a lot of our cooking oils, olive oil, vegetable oil, etc. Uh, phospholipids, number three, which we find in cell membranes. Um, number four, steroids, uh, which can be found in the plasma membrane, uh, but also uh, some sex hormones uh, can be used in some medicines. And number five, waxes, protection, prevention of water loss, beeswax, earwax, uh, various places in nature that we find those biomolecules. Bio uh, first, taking a look at triglycerides, uh, and we'll see why it's called a triglyceride here in a second. They are called fats and oils, so they were the first two from the chart back there. Uh, their function is long-term energy storage. Uh, the, we talked about the carbohydrates in the last chapter, so even polysaccharides like starch and glycogen um, are a way to temporarily store energy. They're not the best for long-term storage. Uh, pound for pound, uh, fats and oils can store nine times the energy uh, than carbs. Okay, so if you have a, car a pound of sugar and a pound of butter, you're gonna get about nine times the energy out of the butter. So a much more compact uh, storage uh, method for energy. Uh, and they're called triglycerides because you're going to have a glycerol molecule uh, with three carbons and it's going to be attached and attached to it are going to be three fatty acid chains attached to it. So that's where we get the, where the term triglyceride because of the three fatty acids that are attached to it. Those triglycerides can be either what we call unsaturated or saturated. Uh, now, what does that mean? Unsaturated means that there is at least one or more double bonds in the tri in the fatty acid tails. Okay, uh, and what those double bonds do, and we'll see this like a picture of this on the next slide here. Uh, but when you go in the the infamous carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon bonds, when you have a double bond, it kind of puts a kink in it, so it bends it. Okay, and when you've got tails sticking out everywhere, they don't pack close together. These fats don't pack close together, so they have a higher melting point. Okay, so they tend to be, um, they tend to be uh, oils. Okay, they have a lower melting point, so they tend to be oils. Okay, at room temperature, uh, they can have chemical groups on the same cis or trans opposite side of the double bond. Uh, and these tend to come from plant sources, 
Uh, and these are the ones that tend to be the good fats. Okay, they're better for you, like the EVOO, the extra virgin olive oils, versus saturated fats where there's no double bonds. So just single carbon, single carbon, single carbon, single carbon bond, on and on in all three tails. So they're all very straight. So they all pack pack together and they have a high melting point. So these tend to be solid, like butter and lard. Okay, so these are things that come from animal sources and they tend to be bad for you. you can uh, increase the uh, heart disease and other those kind of things. Uh, trans fat is a triglyceride with at least one bond in a trans configuration uh, where they have kind of uh, they're on opposites. They have the same kind of chemical groups on the opposite sides of the bond. So their, their kinks might all be sort of in the same direction. And so the trans fats can still sort of line up and still pack together. And those aren't always uh, the best for you either. Uh, a lot of restaurants and stuff, uh, they were more stable. Like if you were using uh, trans fats in your, um, in your fryers and stuff for French fries, it tended to be more stable and replace less, but we found out that it's really not good for you. So a lot of restaurants have done away uh, with using trans fats uh, to fry our foods. Okay, so here's what I was talking about, the actual picture here that's showing the, uh, the saturated fat, saturated fat up here, and the unsaturated fat down here, okay? So with the saturated fat, here's the fatty acid, no double bonds. So it's just single, 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 single. So here's our glycerol molecule right here. And then you have one, two, three fatty acids. Look how nice straight that is. So those pack really close together when you have all those molecules. And that gives it, uh, makes it sort of gives it that higher melting point, makes it a solid at normal room temperatures. Whereas if you look at unsaturated fats, Here's double bonds, double bonds. Look what that double bond does. Okay, it puts these little er, er, or bend or er, 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 these little kinks uh, in the tails. And so they're more spread out. And so you can't pack them together as tight. And those tend to be liquid. Like here they're showing corn oil or veggie oil that a lot of people use to cook with. Okay, on this slide, we want to take a little bit closer look at structure. Okay, remember we said a triglyceride is a glycerol with three fatty acids. So our glycerol is going to be a carbon, 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 three carbon atoms, hydrogens on the outside, and OH groups here on the inside. Now, how do we bond biomolecules together? Dehydration synthesis. Dehydrate, take out of water, and syn, S-Y-N, means to put together. So here's, here's uh, fatty acid number one. Uh, you'll see there's a carboxyl group over here, okay? With a double bonded oxygen, we will remove this OH group here and this hydrogen here, and then those that oxygen is bonded to the carbon here. So if you look over here, that's this bond right here, okay? Fatty acid number two, we take off the OH and the H, and it's bonded together here. The third fatty acid right here, take off the OH, the H, that's this bond right here. So when you do dehydration synthesis uh, to make a triglyceride to put the three fatty acids to the glycerol, notice you're taking out three waters, dehydrating three waters. Now, similarly, when we wanna break this apart and go through hydrolysis, we're gonna put three waters back in to break those bonds and pull those back apart. Uh, here they're also showing how that double bond puts that kink or bends that fatty acid chain. Okay, third type, phospholipids. Uh, phospholipids are similar in structure to triglyceride, although we're gonna take off one of the fatty acid chains and we're gonna put a modified phosphate group on the end, okay? And I'll, again, we'll look at structure here on the next slide. What this does, is this phosphate group uh, is polar, okay? So the phosphate group is gonna make it hydrophilic. It's gonna like water. Whereas the fatty acid tails are gonna be nonpolar and 
hydrophobic. Okay, so what it does, <coughs> if you remember that on forming a cell membrane, the phospholipid heads are going to be facing towards the outside with the two fatty acid tails facing to the inside of the membrane, that is, because on the inside of the cell, you have the phospholipid heads facing in and the tails facing out because here would be the cytoplasm, which is mostly water. Uh, this is kind of the fluid between cells, interstitial fluid, again, mostly water. So those heads are going to orient themselves in and out towards that. And then you'll have a hydrophobic region in here by the hydrophobic tails on the inside of the region or inside that kind of sandwich layer. Okay, this forms the plasma membrane of cells, goes all around cells. A lot of the organelles we talk about is a phospholipid uh, bilayer uh, around the nucleus. The nuclear membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. Uh, we'll see this structure, chloroplasts, mitochondria. We'll see this structure again throughout the year in AP biology. Okay, when you drop these things in water, they go bloop, and they just sort of orient themselves. And this is kind of what I was talking about right here. Now, again, some of those double bonds in the tails, okay, those double bonds in the tails, again, help keep it fluid because they're not letting them pack real tight. They're kind of kind of keeping space from each other. And so they can't pack real tight. They're sticking out each way. That helps it feel uh, fluid. Some people uh, or some places I read say, if you could get down, you could feel a cell membrane, it would feel kind of greasy or oily, almost like olive oil. Here's just the diagram of the phospholipid. So in the middle here is our glycerol. So you have carbon, carbon, carbon. There's our three carbons. And then we have dehydration synthesis. We added uh, two fatty acids right here. Notice this one, notice the double bond there. See how that puts a kink in that tail that keeps it further away from the next phospholipid. And instead of the third fatty acid here, okay, we've now added a phosphate group up here. Now notice it's a phosphorus with an oxygen, 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 and then there's various R groups that can be hanging off of there. Sometimes it's just an H. Uh, notice right here, though, that there is a negative, okay? Uh, these oxygens tend to kind of uh, hog electrons because of the high electronegativity. Uh, and so this will make this end polar, okay? It's going to have a slight negative charge. Uh, this side of the molecule is going to be hydrophilic or water loving, whereas the tails down here are gonna be hydrophobic or water fearing, okay? And so when you dump these into water or when, again, inside the cell, cytoplasm, you have lots of water. Uh, outside the cell, interstitial fluid, you have a lot of water. These little phospholipids orient themselves with their heads facing out and the tails facing towards the middle. So you have a hydro, hydrophobic region in here and hydrophilic heads facing out. Uh, the fourth one from our, from our little chart earlier in the slides uh, was steroids. Uh, steroids, you can always tell if you have to choose a picture of like, what's this? What biomolecule is this? Uh, you're going to see four fused carbon rings together and then various functional groups kind of hanging off of that. Uh, that's important in animal cell membranes. Uh, cell membranes have uh, cholesterol in it. Uh, cholesterol, kind of, they say, gives it the membrane kind of a stickiness. Uh, it sort of helps hold everything together. Uh, testosterone and estrogen are two sex hormones uh, that are steroids. And there, it's kind of interesting. You'll see on the next slide here, they're the same carbon skeleton. Uh, they've got just different functional groups hanging off of them. Uh, cholesterol can also be used. We, you know, everyone says, oh, no, no, no cholesterol. Uh, you do need some cholesterol in your body. Uh, it's a precursor for several other steroids that your body uses. Uh, the problem is here with our eating habits and stuff in our culture, we tend to get way too much cholesterol, uh, which can lead to atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries and plaque buildups and coronary disease. 
Uh, here you can just see some of the steroid diversity. Uh, here's testosterone, uh, which would be the male sex hormone. And over here is estrogen, uh, which is the female sex hormone. Look, same, 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 same basic ring structure. Even if you look at cholesterol, which is actually used to make these two, uh, only thing different is what you see in blue, okay? Uh, these functional groups that are attached, and we talked about them in a, the first video of this chapter. Okay, at changing those functional groups uh, very much can change the function of that biomolecule. Last one is waxes. Uh, these are long chain fatty acids. So we're talking a lot of carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon. A long, long hydrocarbon chains uh, that have alcohol functional groups attached to them. Uh, they tend to be solid at room temperature. And you think of waxes like candle wax or ear wax. Okay, they're waterproof. Uh, they resist uh, de degradation. They resist breaking down, uh, which makes them very good for protection. Okay, uh, so earwax, uh, which actually has, uh, we think, kind of a antibiotic um, type factor to it or anti um, sort of kills living things, that kind of stuff. Uh, plant cuticles, the waxy covering over the leaf, which helps them from losing water. Uh, beeswax, so structural purposes in the honeycomb. And finally, on this last slide, you just it's showing some examples of those waxes. Um, a lot of fruits and uh, like grapes, apples. I know I like to take my apples and kind of shine them in my shirt and get them all nice and shiny. That's just that waxy coating they put on. That just helps prevent uh, viral, bacterial, uh, you know, to from breaking down that fruit. Uh, again, structural purposes. Here's a bee and the honeycomb here and how the wax is used to kind of build that structure. Okay. That's it for lipids. In the next video, uh, we will look at proteins. So this is Cam out.